Next, we have a pre-recorded session uh, from um, Louis Bergman, who is uh, Chief Technologist for Azure at uh, YEPAM. And the topic, the topic is uh, really, uh, let's say, um, relevant for any developer, any language, any platform. It's about naming. But in that uh, context, this will be about naming in Azure. So let's watch this. Hello, cloud builders. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. I have no idea where in the world you are. And of course, in our post-COVID life, no one does. I'm Lewis Berman from EPAM Systems. I'm the chief technologist there for Azure. And I'm here to talk to you about a topic that doesn't get a lot of love, but I think really should. It's called getting control of your Azure naming. And, and I think this is a topic that punches well above its weight, right? Bear with me for a second. So blah, 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 I'm interesting. I like Azure, bye. So, uh, there are only two hard things in computer science, cache invalidation and naming things. And if you can ask me, I don't think uh, cache invalidation is an, a problem any longer, but naming things is perennially hard. And Phil Carlton famously said this, he was the principal curmudgeon at Netscape, a very, very famous architect. And he must've said this uh, 25, 30 years ago, so, some long distance in, in the past, 25 years ago, I'm showing my age. Uh, but the point is, Naming is hard, but it's worthwhile to work on it. So there's a bunch of technical challenges for starters. Like for instance, Azure has hundreds of different resource types, each and every one of which has its own set of often inexplicable naming rules. So management groups, uh, you know, have letters and hyphens and parentheses, you know, but storage accounts are, are lowercase letters and digits only, no dash, no underscore, no period. Q names are lowercase only. Blob names are mixed characters. The rules are very, very complex. So click on that link if you wanna find more about the naming rules. There's hundreds of them. And we'll uh, look at that a little later in the, this talk. And by the way, I have a full list of resources for you uh, to go through. So anyway, just as a few examples, let's not concentrate on the left or, or in middle column, but let's just look at the names. Names could have dashes in them. They could be uppercase, lowercase. I prefer lowercase. That's why all of these are lowercase. Uh, but, you know, in some cases, uh, your organization doesn't want to do that. Uh, and depending upon the individual name, you have abilities to work with different rules in different ways. So it's important to note that names, whether um, we mean to or not, are generally built up above, blah, 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 built up from pieces. I can't talk. So like a name code in a business unit, an environment, and maybe a, a, you know, a region and thing, things like, like that. The point is names are meant to as compactly as possible to convey meaning about what the resource is, where it is, what it is, why it counts, is it dev, is it prod, what have you. And uh, I'm gonna show you a program called Azure Names that this is taken from where it validates names according to patterns or regular expressions. So for instance, a storage account is validated to a regular expression, whereas uh, a Linux VM name is validated to a pattern. So let's say that was the technical names, but that's only half the battle. So what if you want to have a corporate standard for your own names? Well, it turns out that uh, in any substantially sized company, you're gonna have lots of problems coming up with one naming standard, but that isn't necessarily bad. And that isn't necessarily a reason for you to not try to strive to have a corporate wide naming standard. And, but different people have different opinions on this. Microsoft basically says, accurately representing name your resources essential for security purposes. It says it very unambiguously. On the other end of the spectrum, Rasmus Listman, uh, Listrum, I think I'm saying his name right, while having a naming convention on a small team where everyone's on board might work for you, having a company-wide naming convention will only confuse and irritate people. So that's two ends of the bookend. I'll, I'll leave it to your own uh, you know, thoughts, which is better, but I tend to be more in the Microsoft camp and less in the Rasmus camp. But um, again, naming is all about your getting a hold and corralling your resources in Azure and otherwise. So anyway, I wrote a program called Azure Names. Azure Names is a tool that helps you validate your names in your code with a name validator component. It also validates names via a REST service. It begins with a default 
default set of rules, but you can create your own. It's written in C sharp, uh, and rules can be enforced by regex or pattern matching. So uh, it, let me just show you real quick what the thing is. So it's a program. I won't go into it because there's just so much to do, but there is, here's a configuration file which uh, lets you decide which fields are gonna go into your names and then what the rules of the names are. Are they a collection of fields? Do they use a regex directly or what have you? And then that's running. And then if I went to a browser, I think here I am. If I go to Postman, Postman is really great for uh, doing uh, REST calls. Uh, for instance, I just validated a name. Uh, it was uh, MG-Marketing and it was a management group. And I got a validation uh, result that said, yes, that was good. Uh, it was uh, as valid as true. And it gave me some sample names just in case I didn't know what other names were. And then uh, the next thing is, let's say I had a bad name, right? XXX is probably gonna be fine for a lot of different naming types, but unrecognized name kind doesn't know what that is. And so indeed it comes back and says it's, it's invalid and it gives me a list of valid name kinds. So uh, it's a very easy to use um, application uh, and library. And I would encourage everyone to use it um, or better yet to download it and fork it. It's open source for your, for your use and please enjoy. So there are three ways to enforce names uh, and I don't have enough time to go, go into them other than to say Azure policy allows you to in Azure uh, policy settings say, I want names to conform to very, very tight rules, whether by regex or, or other rules. There's also tooling like Azure names, which allows you before you even write the names to decide on proper names, put, put them in place. And very often that tooling is integrated with uh, you know, portals and other uh, websites that create your Azure resources. And then finally, uh, even if you don't want to do that, you can use monitoring and alerting, and this might even be through policy, to find names that don't comply and then manually at some point fix them. So uh, here's a whole bunch of resources. We're just going to pop at the look at those right now. And uh, so very importantly, the most important place for you to go is naming rules and restrictions for Azure. This is the one-stop shop for everything that what names can do. And they vary, you know, I'm, I'm just scrolling down through here and there's just tons and tons of things. An account can be alphanumeric with hyphen, uh, as an example, I'll just randomly pick thing. Uh, provisioning service, uh, alphanumeric and hyphen, but has to end with alphanumeric, whereas uh, the consumer groups have periods and underscores. It varies very widely. There are different patterns that people make names and Microsoft has a recommended pattern defining your name and convention uh, where they have uh, abbreviation for the actual resource, uh, the workload or application name, an environment abbreviation, an Azure region and an optional number. And that works for a lot of people. Uh, I, I like it and I do a variation on that myself. And then uh, there is recommended abbreviations for Azure resource types, uh, you know, whether it be MG for a management group or whether it be a peer for virtual network peering or what have you. So there are hundreds of them again. Uh, and then, uh, so here's a page that I particularly like, what information be included when naming Azure resources, even though there are hundreds of different types, it turns out, the most common ones, I still have problems figuring out what the names names are. So this lists maybe 20 of the most common uh, resources and very importantly has good examples that go with it. And then I, I, I talked about enforcing naming through using policy. So here's a web, web page, how to enforce naming conventions for Azure resources uh, that goes into how to set the policy up, how to use it, how to work around with it. I find it very, very useful. And then then of course, finally, uh, again, I believe naming conventions make sense, but uh, some people think they just slow you down. So here's uh, an article about why naming conventions are bad. I will leave it to your own devices to decide whether that is, is good or bad. And uh, so I think I, I, I'm literally out of time. Oh, EPAM, interesting company. If you look at this PowerPoint, learn more about us. Right, and uh, I'm here to help, right? Uh, I would very much like to, to help you. 
especially if you're interested in working with or adopting the Azure Names project. Uh, so please feel free to reach out and, and thank you so much and keep it in the Azure Cloud.